Put your faith in the light. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I am all out of gum. Ladies and gents, it's Neil here from TFI Cat Tips. And about five or six months ago, I got myself a new laptop. Now, I got the Alienware 17, and I'm not going to get into a discussion as to why I bought a gaming laptop and why I chose to ignore the Precision Mobile Workstations and the Zbooks or comparisons between the two. Having said that, this laptop is an absolute monster and it will keep up with any mobile workstation when it comes to using Autodesk Inventor, which is what this channel is all about. So, the specs of this laptop, just before I get into the main purpose of this video, the specs of the laptop are, it has an i7-6820HK Skylake CPU, clocked at 4.1 gigahertz. It has 32 gig of DDR4 dual channel 2133 MHz RAM. The hard disk is a Samsung PM951 512 gig PCI Express NVMe solid state drive. It has a 4K screen and the GeForce 980M 8 gig of VRAM variant graphics card in there. So it's a pretty specced up notebook. It is quite powerful. Now, one of the things that drew me towards the Alienware range was the fact that they offered an optional extra called their graphics amplifier. So if you've never heard of the graphics amplifier, it is an external box that sits alongside your notebook and you can plug in a desktop class graphics card into this box and power your laptop from a full-on, full-powered desktop graphics card. So that got me thinking, can I buy a gaming notebook and then run a professional workstation graphics card through the laptop? Can I have this gaming notebook and run a Fire Pro or a Quadro graphics card alongside the notebook? That was what I was thinking, that's what I did, and let's see what happened. Obvious the amplifier was conceived with the hardcore gamer in mind, it's unlikely that the professional workstation grade cards were discussed during the various design meetings during the design phase, but do I care? Not a jot! The amplifier is compatible with the current gen Alienware 13, 15, 17R2 and 17R3 laptops with the R3 being the unit that I've got here. If you're unsure, if your laptop will work with it though, ask yourself, does my laptop have a great big glowing alien head anywhere on the chassis? That would be a good place to start. And then check for the proprietary amplifier port which looks a little well, it actually looks exactly like this. It's unmistakable from any other port on the notebook. If the answer is yes to both of those questions, then you're not quite there yet. Ask yourself, do you have or can you justify the £218.99 or $199 price tag that they've slapped onto this thing. It's either a steep price to pay for an occasional use novelty or a necessary expenditure for those who desperately want to be at the bleeding edge of graphics performance. And at the time of recording this video, and annoyingly only on the US side, Alienware are offering the amplifier for free when you purchase the top end 13, 15 or 17 notebooks. So if you're genuinely interested in a setup like this, now might actually be the best time to go about buying it as the notebook OEMs look to shift existing stock in preparation for the Pascal 10 series mobile GPUs, replacing their current Maxwell 9 series, and this will likely spawn a load of promotional offers in the coming weeks. So the amplifier isn't what you call portable, it's not meant to be carried around with you on your travels, the idea being that you use the mobile internal GPU whilst you're out and about, but when you're at home or in the office, you can then plug in the amplifier and then you're racing with desktop GPU horsepower. So unless you have the luggage allowances of a Kardashian, this thing needs to stay put. It's 6.8 inches in height, 16 inches in length and 7.3 inches wide and weighs a chuffing 7.7 pounds. Inside the amplifier is a... <laughs> a little mini ecosystem designed to sustain the latest high-end cards. Nobody's buying this thing to put in a cheap low-end tier GPU with le less crack than the already pretty powerful mobile GPU that you get on board your Alienware notebook already. The internal space in the amplifier gives you more than enough length for the longest cards on the market and whilst the Dell marketing team give a really dumbed down half arse definition of supported sizes. I've had the MSI GTX 974G, the MSI R9380, Quadro K4000, Quadro M4000, Quadro 2000 and Fire Pro W9100 fit inside lengthwise no problems. But speaking of dumbed and half arsed, Someone within Dell has dropped a serious clanger with the available height clearance inside the amplifier. Most graphics cards that will be used with this thing have a PCI Express 6 or 8 pin power connector that will clip into the top of the card and even with those compulsory connectors hooked into the modest R9380 here, the lid fails to close as it makes contact with the power connectors due to
due to a lack of adequate height clearance. Seriously, Dell, really? Did, did nobody bother to close the lid during the testing of this thing? Is this actually happening? It's not the end of the world, the amplifier still functions without the lid being sealed, but that's just not the point here. I mean, come on. Moving on to the power source, and most desktop cards should be sufficiently juiced by the included 460 watt dedicated power supply, which is interchangeable if you absolutely must, like if you'd prefer sleeved cabling, for example, which personally I think Alienware should have went with anyway, given that the amplifier will mainly appeal to the enthusiast, and that crowd simply do not need this mess in their life. But given that you can't run SLI or Crossfire here, I highly doubt anyone is going to be upgrading the PSU for power gains. I reckon the main reason would be to minimise the noise output from the amplifier, which is pretty loud even at idle. But if you're not fussed about the noise because you wear headphones or you live in a noisy environment anyway, I can't see the justification in taking on that extra cost for a new PSU, especially now that the next gen GPUs are even more power efficient than ever before. So if you are going to swap out that Dell PSU, just be warned that your options are going to be limited and that you'll need to consider both where the socket location is, spatial limits around the PSU, and going with a non-modular PSU will turn this into a crammed box full of tatty cables. Anyone still not convinced can observe that this is the AMD FirePro W9100 running via the amplifier. This card has a serious power addiction and at 275 watts, the card draws more power than a Titan X and copes just fine off the stock power supply inside the amplifier. Most, if not all, future cards will actually draw less power than this W9100 does. So touching back on those power connectors, the amplifier has two 6 or with the attachment two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors. They'll have you covered for pretty much all cards on the market today and with the new GTX 1080 requiring only one 8-pin connector on the Founders Edition, connectivity just shouldn't be an issue regardless of which card you go for. And speaking of which, connecting your card into the amplifier is really as simple as it possibly can be. Just remove the front PCI Express brackets and clip it into place. No difference really from slotting in a card onto a desktop motherboard. The amplifier comes with a stock internal cooling fan integrated into the back of the chassis. One can only assume that this is Dell's influence at play here as this thing is shocking and no enthusiast will stand for it. As far as fans go, I mean it blows air but I shit you not it sounds like a busted old vacuum cleaner. During filming I cranked the fan up to 100% and my cat who was sleeping just out of picture here literally shit his pants as he swore blind that the Lord was striking down upon him with great vengeance and furious anger. Fortunately though, Alienware must have stepped in here and facilitated for the fan to be replaced with the third party 92mm fan of your choice. Something like the, the Noctua NFB9 seems to be a popular choice and that along with the replacement power supply all but eliminates all noise from the not in any way sound insulated chassis. Checking out the rear, you'll find a number of ports for increased utility, most notably the all-important proprietary port for the amplifier to notebook cable. We're not at a point yet whereby external graphics technology has a common industry standard, but Dell claim that their connectivity solution is actually superior to Thunderbolt 3, which is utilised on the likes of the Razer Core, which is another external graphics box. The Alienware amplifier embraces PCI Express 3.0 for dedicated graphics bandwidth, whereas the Thunderbolt 3 connection shares bandwidth across multiple peripherals. Dell also claim that upon the release of the PCI Express 4.0 standard, they can easily tweak their cable to adopt the new revision, which to me sounds like a universal industry standard for external graphics isn't going to happen anytime soon but what are you going to do? Back on point though, the physical connectivity cable itself is relatively inoffensive and braided to a point whereby I'd say it's pretty good looking and emits an aura of quality doubling up as a USB and PCI Express communication line. It's a proprietary port so it only will work with the Alienware laptops and around four and a half feet long it's long enough to position the box anywhere within reason. My only criticism being that the connection into the rear of the laptop feels kind of loose and flimsy it's in there alright, but flapping about like this you can't help but assume something is being stressed in there and it's going to end badly. One of the few negatives to this generation of Alienware laptops is that they only have three integrated USB 3 ports, not much use to a working professional who typically owns a stack of external devices. Fortunately though, the graphics amplifier provides you with an additional four USB 3 ports which, whilst I won't snark about that, they're obviously only of any use when you're actually hooked into the amplifier. Right then, what's it like to use? Well, once you've pre-installed the relevant graphics driver, the laptop goes through a boot cycle and then launches into Windows powered by the external card. In this case, the AMD FirePro W9100 Professional Graphics Card. What you see on the laptop screen is powered via the external card 
and or you can hook up an external monitor via the display output ports on the external card itself. I've got to say though, I'm hugely impressed with how AMD have allowed their X-Connect software to integrate with the Alienware amplifier all but seamlessly to a point where I actually had to triple check that what I was seeing on the screen was actually piped up to the screen by the external card. It's that slick. There's driver-based management for applications where you can monitor which programs are using the external card and which are utilizing the i7 CPU onboard graphics. And that's another minor gripe that I've got with the Alienware range, but that's for another video. But all things said and done, the potential here is real. It's hugely impressive, and even though the amplifier isn't portable and requires mains power, having the option of taking this with you to an event instead of packing and taxiing a huge bulky workstation tower, just flip open your notebook, hook up the amplifier, and boom, you can pump out six 4K displays and do what you gotta do with the W9100 and its 16 gigs of video RAM on the move. So to wrap it up, I'll be doing a bit of a disservice if I didn't run a very quick rough and ready performance comparison between the Fire Pro W9100 professional graphics and the onboard GeForce 980M gaming graphics. What's the performance difference at 4K between those completely contrasting architectures when it comes to powering Autodesk Inventor and Autodesk Showcase? Remember, these tests are being run natively at 4K. So first up is the W9100, one of the most powerful professional graphics cards in the world. This is it via the amplifier pumping its baby gravy into Autodesk Inventor. The graph on screen is the MSI Afterburner real-time monitoring, which is reporting 9 or 10 frames per second, spinning the BAC mono on shaded with edges. Moving into the realistic view style, we're averaging around 12 frames per second, and don't forget this is 4K, so we're doubling the pixel count over 1080p, and as a result, performance will drop. Enabling shadows and reflections causes the frame rate to dip below 8, which is the point whereby Inventor throttles visual assets to maintain 8 frames per second or above, and then you can see the shadows being dropped to lighten the load. And come out the other side when people walk upside down. And now for Autodesk Showcase. So unlike Inventor, this application renders entirely on the GPU, as you can just about see in the bottom graph in Afterburner. The screen capture software is taking a hit as a result, hence the jerky capture, but in real time, we were getting around about on average 30 frames per second in Showcase on the Fire Pro W9100. Now for the onboard GeForce 980M mobile graphics chip integrated into the Alienware 17R3 laptop with the graphics amplifier completely disconnected. Same data sets, same system and application settings in the same 4K resolution. For Inventor, we're getting between 10 and 12 frames per second on the shaded with edges test on par, if not a slight increase on the nine or 10 frames per second that we were getting with the Fire Pro W9100. Realistic view, it's pushing 15 frames per second on the 980M in contrast to the 12 frames per second with the Fire Pro and like the Fire Pro, the 980M can't maintain over 8 frames per second with the visual effects enabled, although it did feel like the dip wasn't quite as bad before the throttling started. So pure GPU rendering at 4K with Showcase on the 980M was delicious. The flagship mobile 980M pulling 50 frames per second, stomping all over the 30 managed by the Fire Pro W9100. But it's worth pointing out though that AMD cards have historically had issues with Showcase. Whether or not they've ironed out the kinks remains to be seen. And I guess just drop me a like on this video if you'd like to see comparisons between Quadro, GeForce, Fire Pro and Radeons in this style. So this is quite unfair on the W9100. Contrary to uneducated beliefs, professional workstation cards are not like magical keystones to CAD. You don't just add one and it's like it's meant to be. The W9100 is indeed a phenomenal card. Speaking specs, across the board, it's exactly twice as good as the 980M with double the VRAM, double the memory band with an interface, and it was running on them professionally certified drivers that the uneducated seem to believe make all the difference over anything gaming or consumer hardware related. The fact is, the W9100 is a big fish from a completely different pond. Now it's available with an astonishing 30 gig of onboard video RAM. If you need to draw 50 million pixels out of six simultaneous 4K displays, if you need to power a building sized video wall, if you need to process and edit video effects in real time across multiple displays, and did somebody say VR? Well then the W9100 is your boy. And to close, should you fancy the unusual combination of having the top tier in mobile gaming yet being able to switch over to an amplifier running one of the most powerful professional graphics cards in the world, even though this is an extreme situation, the absolute ballers over in the AMD Fire Pro team have said they've got your back. Yes, this will be a fully supported workflow. All right, guys, thank you very much. That was my review of the Alienware Graphics Amplifier running the AMD Fire Pro W9100 card. Drop me a like if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this. Drop a comment down below. Get subscribed to TFI CAD Tips. I'll be doing a lot more videos like this in the future. And until next time, I'll see you later. Toodles.